Hi, this is Andrew Gums. This is another episode of Artificial Intelligence and Cyber Surgery. I'm the editor-in-chief of Artificial Intelligence Surgery, the first journal dedicated exclusively to surgery and artificial intelligence. I'm here with my uh, co-host, Dr. Vincent Grasso, and I'll let him uh, introduce our, our guest today. Hi, it's I, Dr. Vincent Grasso. I'm the social media and strategy director for our our journal, Artificial Intelligence Surgery, and as, as uh, Dr. Gum said, we're the only journal dedicated to all things AI. You can find us at AISjournal.net, and we have uh, the great pleasure and privilege of, of uh, having on the show one of Dr. Gums's colleagues, Dr. Gaia Spolverato, and um, thank you for joining on Saturday, and, and uh, uh, congratulations on, uh, on the new birth of your baby. So it's an exciting time for you. Yes, you have Thank a you. you have a four week hold hold at home. Yes. Okay, so we, yeah. we will be in exactly twenty minute uh, starting right now. Okay, so so Gaia, can you uh, let our listeners know uh, where you work right now and um, maybe a little bit how we know each other, how our common friend and uh, and and when we when and why we used to hang out in New York. Right. Right. So um, I'm working as a surgical oncologist and associate professor of surgery at the University of Padua. Uh, I went back from the United States in 2018 uh, and I joined a great team of surgical oncologists and general surgeons at the University of Padua. Uh, I'm doing mostly GI uh, and sarcoma. Um, and um, I learn uh, most of what I know uh, from my true experience in the United States. The first one uh, was in 2013 to 2015 at Johns Hopkins University under the supervision of uh, Tim Pollack, uh, who was the head of surgical oncology at that time. And I was his research fellow. And then I moved back, I completed my residency and I went back to the States uh, at Morris Sloan Kettering as the International Surgical Oncology Fellow. Um, I got to know you uh, around 2015, I, I guess. It's the year when uh, Isabella Frigeri and I uh, founded Women in Surgery Italia. And um, Andrew was um, for a long time in Italy, uh, a bit before then, um, and was a great friend. Thanks for not great mentioning friend the of day. Isabella. Thanks for not men mentioning how long ago that was. <laughs> Exactly, I didn't say more. Um, and it was a great uh, friend of Isabella. So uh, when we were looking for a he for she, uh, supporting women surgeons in Italy, but not only in Italy, uh, we thought about him. So this is why we get to know each other. So did we, did we lose Gaia? Oh no, are you there Vincent? I'm here, yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll, let her, in. We'll, let her, we'll let her sign back in. Gaia? There she is. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm here. Yeah, we lost you just for a second. So. Okay, sorry, I'm very, very sorry. Yeah, no problem. Tell, tell us a little bit more uh, about your, about women in surgery, Italia. Where did you get the idea to, to start it? Why did you guys feel the need uh, to start it? Um, just because I'm, I'm sure all the all the women listening can don't really need um, clarification on this issue, but I think a lot of the men might need clarification on, on why. Yeah. So in 2015, Isabella and I were working together, um, and I was actually his her resident. Um, we were performing surgery. She's a pancreatic cancer surgeon, and um, we were performing a Whipple, and there was just the two of us. She was actually teaching me how to perform a Weibo. Uh, when we finished the operation, uh, we got together and said, listen, this was, I think the first time in this hospital, but I guess even in other hospitals in Italy, that two women surgeons alone are performing this surgery. Um, and all the team, like the anesthesiologists, like everybody was, uh, was female. So at that time we said, things are changing, even in Italy. <laughs> so it's time to talk about that. And um, at that time we look, we look around, we look at um, 
few other people who would uh, support us. And we got some help from the Italian Society of Surgery, uh, but mostly there were the two of us thinking about the importance to uh, meet other people, to know other women surgeons, and to create the opportunity for younger women. Well, I think I think Gaia is is on the beach in Italy, so her uh, her connection must be a little bit uh, suspect. Let me see if we can get her back. She'll be back. There she is. Yeah, it's it's well it's well worth the wait. She say no. It's really exciting that she. Do did. you guys can eat it? We can now. Yeah, we lost you again for a second. Um, we lost about. I'm very sorry, I, I don't know why. 15 seconds. No problem. Well, well, rem remind us where you are. Uh, you're, you're, on this, you're, you're in some lovely place in Italy, even though every place in Italy is lovely. Or is it top secret, your location? My, my location is uh, top secret, but it's, uh, it's on the, the beach, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm taking my turn to leave on the beach. I thought it was a good idea. Okay, okay, great. Great so, idea. So, okay, so this was in 2015. And now were there other... Um, you know, you know, I'm just going to put a little interlude before I ask my question. Um, Women in Surgery is uh, one of the official organizations of our journal. And the reason we did that is historically, women have been upper, underrepresented in the, um, in the sciences and engineering, mathematics, and things like that. So we really felt strongly that a journal dedicated to uh, the newest technology, if you will. We really needed, we really wanted a female presence, which is why uh, Gaia and Isabella are both uh, associate editors of, of our journal. So with that little bit of information, were there other women in surgery societies around the world that ha had already existed? Yeah, there were a few. Uh, actually, two big uh, associations were uh, in the United States. Uh, Association of Women Surgeons and Women in Surgery. Um, and uh, there were a few in the, in the United Kingdom, in Japan. And, and we look at them and um, the funny thing is that, is that one day, um, since I was at Hopkins before, and at that time, uh, Julie Freshlag was the, the chairman. Yes. So uh, I call her and I was just like a research fellow yeah. and I asked for an appointment um, and she said, well, you are very brave. Uh, I'm going to get you an appointment. And we actually talk over uh, the phone for almost an hour okay. discussing the importance of association. And she served as a great mentor for us. She really encouraged us, she really helped us, and she gave us a lot of information, everything we need to create an association. So she really helped us a lot. Um, so basically I have to thank many people around there. Amalia Cochran, Julie Freischlag, well, you know, and, and many women of AWS. Um, just on, on, on um... That, that story in, in Hopkins is very interesting to me. And I actually mentioned, I remember mentioning this, I think when we talked to Isabella on an earlier pop, podcast, and I'm trying to be as politically correct when I, when I say what I'm about to say, but at the time, the, 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 I never saw the actual video of this, but the, the word on the street was that the previous chairman at Hopkins went on CNN and said that women have essentially no business in surgery. And because of that statement, they did everything they could to find a non-male chairman and, and they chose her, <laughs> obviously. So, I mean, you know, she's really- uh, Well, not that she doesn't deserve it. She's no, amazing. no, that's not at all what I meant. And, I, and I, as I said it, I was like, that's, you know, that's coming out wrong. But what, what, yeah, what I meant, yeah. she deserves it and a thousand other women before her deserve it also. That, you know, that's, that's not at all what I meant. But it's interesting that I didn't know that Women in Surgery Italia was born essentially from her, which is really the one of the biggest symbols of of of, of women in surgery in the United States. That's uh, that's, that's true. I forgot that detail that you were at Hopkins. With. I don't I don't even know if I ever told you. Wow. We don't really talk about that. 
they were the two of us, Isabella and I, uh, in her house. We were taking some time to discuss about detail. We were like designing the logo. We did everything by ourselves. Did, did you know about that history about uh, the former chairman at Hopkins? Did you hear about that? Wait, I, I did, I did, yeah. Oh, good, so yeah. good. So I'm not, I'm not <laughs> just stating. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, good. So, yeah. Okay, so it's true. It's, it's, it's hard to imagine now, you know, how, how many years ago, this must have been, you know, almost 20 years ago. It, it, it's, but can you imagine people used to talk like I guess that? less, yeah. I guess you less know? than that though. Mm. What, oh, uh, amazing, amazing. So, yeah. um, so as far, you know, you know, Gaia has done an incredible job since she's returned to Italy, um, writing articles on women in surgery. And she's been uh, gracious enough to involve me on it. And she's, her team has done an incredible job, published now two articles on the discrimination in the workplace uh, in annals of surgery, uh, another article in, in the journal of the ACS. Um, and and I'm, I can't tell you as someone who's half Italian and a surgeon how proud I am that Women in Surgery Italia really has become, um, you know, I think one of the leaders in change um, in, Thank you. in surgery. So it, it's, re it's really been phenomenal. How? Yeah, I always thought that if you want to start from somewhere, you have to start from the data. You have to start with what you from what we you have, and uh, we had a lot to discuss about. So first of all, we look at the the literature, and we thought that writing reviews would have helped us, would have helped all the women in surgery, um, recognizing the bias of our daily life. Then uh, to encourage other people to start discussing about these topics, even male. And then we did this huge survey, uh, which helped us a lot to discuss about the Italian situation. And then many other papers are ongoing right now. Um, and this was a great idea to get many people together to get to know more women surgeons in Italy, even of other subspecialties. So, I mean, till now, it gave me a lot of satisfaction. You, you know, we're, we just recently wrote um, a white paper on autonomous actions in surgery. And uh, we're, I'm actually, I'm about to send an email out later this, uh, probably today. Um, because we, we added 22 editorial board members and we want to talk about the white paper. But we also, and I was talking with, uh, with uh, Vincent about this, we want to talk about our next white paper. And it's actually uh, a, a topic which you guys have already published on in our journal, but I want to expand it a little bit and how artificial intelligence can be the great equalizer in surgery. Uh, and and right. that statement means so many things. And we thought about number one, um, a doctor, has bad outcomes, but when you actually look at the data and you actually look at all of the data, that doctor maybe operates on more difficult tumors or maybe operates on poorer people who have poor access to healthcare and their post-op care isn't as good. Number two, uh, a, a female surgeon is overly criticized for a complication, again, because we're not looking at the real data and people have their biases, they don't even realize their bias. Uh, number three, if we can get people with AI access to more standardized care, you, you know, we have stories of some heads of surgery operating on tumors, people with pancreatic cancer and liver metastasis. And it's like, you know, how is this possible today? This is possible because we're not looking at the data in a formalized way and, and, and stopping things like this happening. How, how do you think, uh, you know, why did you agree to be part of the journal. What are your views on, on how AI can, uh, can help things? Well, I love technology. And I think that technology will help women uh, to overcome some of the bias that we, we are still experiencing. Um, and I think that it's a future. It's the present and the future. So we have to work together to create better a uh, better environment and a better technological environment. Uh, we also have to work with men to create better platforms, there are better software that are good at, are as good as for men and women. 
And I also think that can be a great equalizer in surgery, as uh, we said in the, in the paper. First of all, think that women are affected by low esteem of themselves. This is like very, very um, confirmed by many data. Imposter so looking at the, what? Imp uh, imposter syndrome. Exactly, also yeah. imposter syndrome, right, right, right. Uh, but they tend to uh, underestimate themselves also. So if they can look at the data and see their outcome and see their improvement, they can be much more powerful and much more self-conscious of their qualities and possibilities and ask for a higher position. It's great for performing surgery, even in places where the law uh, doesn't allow you to stand on next to the, the OR table. For example, in Italy, you can't operate for the entire time of your pregnancy and for the five months or four to five months after pregnancy. So at that time, if you can perform surgery, let's say remotely or at least with a robot and having somebody else working on the patient, you are, I mean, helping women to continue to progress, to continue to work and to learn during pregnancy. Because think at what one year of. You, you know, it's, it's Guy, like, can, you, can you tell me a little bit more about this? Because I remember when Isabella told me when this happened to her and, and now, yeah. and, and I'm still in denial. It didn't even occur to me. This is actually still the case for you, for instance? It's still the case for, for me. I can tell you what happened. So uh, I didn't declare my pregnancy until I was eight months pregnant. I was very thin and nobody really could say she that did a, I was She did pregnant. a TED talk, by the way, and, 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 I, and I was, and I, I, yeah. and I said, oh my God, I was so proud yeah. of her. I'm like, you look so beautiful. And she's like, you know, I was nine months pregnant, right? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, 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 I was nine months pregnant, yeah. So. I actually performed surgery till uh, the eighth month, and I uh, I had to take the ninth month off because they forced me. It's like that that, that you can. at the time you declare you're pregnant, you have to stay home. So that's what I did. Uh, but basically, I was against the law, and well, you can do it. Can you explain? You can. I mean, I think the rationale is that the the anesthetic gases might be ter teratogenic. Is, is that the voodoo? Yeah, we are not really using, well, we are, we are not really using uh, teratogenic gas anymore. Uh, and again, most of us know that they're pregnant uh, after the teratogenic phase. So I don't know. I think that uh, it's more um, re like biological risk or, uh, I don't know, at least to get a puncture with needle, with, I don't know, some kind of like infection. Uh, I think it's more like that or the risk of miscarriage while you stand in the OR for many hours. Uh, so I think that's what happened. So basically you can, you can from the, from the time you declare a pregnancy and everybody declared pregnancy around the third month. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. it, it's, hard, it's hard to imagine. I don't know any other country that does that. Do you know any other country that does that? Uh, I don't know about Spain, actually, but, but yeah, no, I don't know other, other countries, actually. So I don't know which is the low in, uh, in Europe. It depends from state to state, actually. So, so Vincent um, is, our, is our AI heavyweight. So we only have a few minutes left, and I know you have a, a newborn baby. So I, I want to give Vincent a chance to kind of tell us how, uh, obviously, you, you know, Dr. Uh, Professor Spolverato already pointed out a lot of the uh, potential benefits of AI, but do you have anything to add on, on something like uh, something which really seems as ridiculous to me as not letting female surgeries operate after delivering? I can, I can almost forgive before, but, but the months after is, is, is even, it's just mind boggling to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, and that that um, that seems to be, you know, you know, 
a, a retrograde position, right? And and um, and and having people have a fair a fair shot at performing their 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 jobs well. You know, Guy, I'm curious. Just just in closing, we could have. I think we can continue the conversation because I was trained. What my chief resident was. Um, was a, was a woman. She was amazing. I, but there were mostly men in my surgical residency. Maybe yours at Yale, Andrew. Did you have a 50-50 split with you know women and men in your program? So Yale. When I was at Yale, Yale had one of the the best representations of women uh, in in the in the residents and also as the attendings. We had very powerful. Uh, and what I mean by that is is talented and wonderful female attendings. We had Barbara Kinder. We had uh, Julianne Sosa, who's now the head of the UCSF. Uh, we had Sanziana Roman, uh, who is also at UCSF. And, and all the female uh, chief residents, you know, uh, I adored them all. I mean, me, me, you know, because they were so talented, so nice, so on top of their game, so intelligent, everything. So I was very lucky. But at that time, I think only 11% of women were surgeons. Yeah. This again yeah. was 20 years ago. Um, but so I, I think I had, I had a little, being at Yale, I had a vision of the future because we had many more female surgeons and I, and I always uh, enjoyed that. I, I always felt like we need more female surgeons. Yeah, you know, Gaia, you, you know, Padua and Milano and you know, the, 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 the powerhouses of the north of Italy, you know, their, their academic gravitas span centuries, right? I mm -hmm. would imagine the, 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 you know, young girls, in in Sicily and Calabria and and Puglia in the south, I would imagine they have a harder time, perhaps, in 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 rising to being you know sur lead surgeons in a local hospital, in 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 Sicily rather than you know the, the, the maybe the ease or the the less barriers in the north. Is, is, is are women in surgery you know ha are you able to to help those people down south, um, you know, break the barriers of a more, you know, conservative mindset or have those barriers been broken and, and you see good progress happening down there? The women in surgery help every woman uh, achieving their dream to become a surgeon. Nice. Uh, so we actually help them to find mentors uh, everywhere in Italy and abroad. Um, I actually just launched uh, one month ago the first mentorship program for women surgeons in Italy. Um, and some of them from, were from the South. But beside that, you have to understand that most of the, uh, of the doctors working in the North are coming yeah. from the South. So most of them uh, studied at like Northern universities, sure. uh, but not all of them, of course. Um, so there are very, um, good and then and, and healthy and then great uh, realities also in the south but uh so i could say that the problem is everywhere yeah. uh, but on the other hand we are trying to make the difference where there are more women in the denominator nice. so and mo the majority of women are like in the north right now uh, but still uh, you have to understand that uh, being professor of surgery in Italy is a great thing uh, because in university position, just full professor become uh, head of the department. And right now, uh, out of 87 or 88, uh, full professor, just three are women. Oh, okay. Wow. So we have to work a lot for the leadership position. It's exciting. Congratulations on your efforts. Really, it's it's amazing, right, Andrew? It, it is. I, I could talk to Gaia for another hour, um, but I will. I I respect uh, the the four week newborn, and uh, and Thank unfortunately, you. we have to let you go, Gaia. Um, have a great uh, another four months off. I think. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back. I, I'm going back uh, at the beginning of uh, October, but I'm still working from home, but not seeing patients, unfortunately. Well, good. So we can involve nice. some, some uh, I know you're busy. I can write more paper. <laughs> you can write more papers. Good, good, good. Great. Great. Well, uh, it, it's always a pleasure, Gaia. Uh, Vincent, we'll... Um, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk to, and, and uh, Guy, we'll hear from you, I'm sure, soon. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Yeah. Try to stay Enjoy, cool. Gaia.
tried not to get attacked by a uh, burning forest. I had that problem a few <laughs> days ago. But, uh, yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Congratulations. Take care. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.